Hello, I'm Sister Vasa, and I'm back here in Vienna, in Austria, after many busy weeks of traveling to Greece and to the United States. My crew here in Vienna has also been quite busy doing various things, like watching the World Cup. Anyway, today I am making coffee that was sent to me by a viewer in California named John Gavinovich. The coffee comes in a pouch, as you can see, and it's called Gano Life Black 365. Thank you to John Gavinovich for sending us this coffee. Now, those of you who watch this show are probably wondering what is happening with Emilios, our Greek costume designer, who was released from jail right on Easter and immediately proposed to Anka, our beautiful Polish set designer, who gave birth to Emilios' child, baby Francis, while Emilios was still in jail. It's a very sunny day today, as you can see here in Vienna. Anyway, you might remember that Anka refused to marry Emilios until he could prove that he could make an honest living. I'm glad to inform you that things do seem to have improved between the two of them, Anka and Emilios, because Emilios is now working very hard at his job at the Burgtheater for many weeks now. He's also babysitting baby Francis three evenings a week, while Anka takes English lessons together with some of our other crew members, with an English instructor that I hired for them several weeks ago, a young Englishman named Dr. Silkworth. He tells me that Anka is very talented and has a rare gift for languages. Actually, my makeup artists and also Emilios tell me that they think that the young Dr. Silkworth pays a little bit too much attention to Anka, but that's none of my business. I told Emilios he should just work hard be a good father, relax and watch the World Cup, and that he just has to wait and not hurry things. By the way, concerning the World Cup, our PR manager advised me that it would be politically incorrect for me to voice support for any team in particular. So I will abstain from doing that. This is, after all, an international show. Oh, but speaking of the World Cup, I almost forgot to talk about our new mug. It says, I don't drink alone on one side. And on the other side, it says, I drink coffee with Sister Vasa. Emilios designed this mug for us, and I hope you like it. If you already got this mug, then I hope you will send us a picture of yourself with the mug. I think we already have a picture of a viewer, don't we? Yes, there it is. This is Lydia from Massachusetts, and we thank Lydia for sending us her picture. Please send to our Facebook page a picture of yourself with the mug, and we will be posting your pictures at the end of each episode. If you don't have a mug yet, then you could get it at this website, www.healthyweb.net. The mugs are also available at two locations in the United States, and we will post the addresses of these locations at the end of this episode. Now, we should finally get on with our program. At this time of year, on June 29th, we celebrate the feast of the two most famous apostles, Peter and Paul. I know that many of you have already celebrated this feast if you are on the new calendar. And by new, we mean the calendar that is only 422 years old. While those of us on the old calendar are actually still in the fasting period that precedes this feast. On today's show, we will talk about the Apostle Peter and in next week's episode about the Apostle Paul. St. Peter is one of the twelve Apostles of Christ, and he is called the leader of the Apostles together with Paul. His name, Peter Petros in Greek, is derived from Petra, which means rock. I am a rock. Now, is that really necessary? These people are going to drive me crazy. Anyway, 
Peter was the son of Jonah and was from Galilee, a region in the north of the Holy Land, from the village of Beit Saida, which was presumably somewhere on the northern coast of the Sea of Galilee. Peter was a married man and a fisherman, along with his brother Andrew and the sons of Zebedee, James and John. Jesus called Peter and his brother Andrew to be fishers of men and they immediately left their nets, as it says in the Gospel of Matthew, and followed him. Peter confessed Jesus as the Messiah, and the Lord praised Peter's faith after this confession, saying, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. So in the Orthodox tradition, Peter is called the rock of faith. That's why it's so interesting that the Gospels also record incidents in which Peter's faith actually faltered, most famously when he thrice denies Christ after the Lord's arrest, and when he abandoned Jesus during his passion, as did the other apostles, except John, of course, and when, together with the other apostles, he did not believe the women's account of Christ's empty tomb after his resurrection. However, As you also might remember, the risen Lord appeared to him, and after Peter three times affirmed his love for the Lord, saying, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you, his position as apostle was reinstated. There is, of course, much more to be said about the apostle Peter, but today we'll just reflect a bit on his love and his faith. Faith did not come easily to the apostles. Even though Peter spoke for all of them when he confessed faith that Jesus was the Messiah, the disciples, including Peter, did not exactly understand what this meant. They heard him teach about his kingdom, but their vision of this kingdom remained confused because the popular hope among the Jews of the time, including the apostles, was that the Messiah would liberate his people from the Romans and reign as earthly king. This is why they all scattered when he, when he was seemingly defeated on the cross by his enemies. And the apostles still didn't understand, even after the resurrection, because they asked him right before his ascension, if you remember, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? It is only at Pentecost, actually, that true faith in Christ's kingdom is given to them as a gift of the Holy Spirit. But note that these early followers of Christ did have love for their teacher even before they acquired faith in what he taught. It was love, after all, and not faith that brought the women to their teacher's tomb to anoint him with myrrh. The last thing they expected was to find the tomb empty. And it was love, not faith, that brought Peter to weep bitterly after he thrice denied Christ, and the Lord, as the Gospel says, looked over at him. And Peter thrice affirms this love after the resurrection, when the risen Lord appeared to him, even though Peter still did not understand what the whole business of the cross and resurrection meant. Thus, Love precedes faith and proper understanding. As the Apostle Paul writes, And now these three abide, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And thus it is in our relationship with God, as well as in our relationships with one another. Our understanding, and hence our faith, can be confused or obscure, while love still maintains the relationship, and ultimately leads us to faith and faithfulness. Let's remember this when we have disagreements on various issues and are tempted to shut the door on love because of this confusion. As the words of the Byzantine liturgy remind us, let us love one another that we may with one mind confess because love opens the door to faith. That's it for today, ladies and gentlemen, the Apostle Peter. Thank you.